Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I went into this movie with no expectations at all, only a lot of curiosity. How were they going to follow the deep footprints that the first movie laid out? How would they handle the character of T'Challa following the unfortunate passing of Chadwick Boseman? All of these questions lead to the one that's been looming over everyone's head. Is this movie going to be worth seeing now that they lost their Black Panther? The short answer is yes, but let's talk about it. Before we start, there are no spoilers in this review, so rest assured, but I will reference the original trailer slightly. Now let's begin. It's important to remember that this is still an MCU movie, so it holds those elements in it, but I've always considered the first Black Panther film to be a different type of Marvel movie, and this one is no different. The movie starts immediately with addressing the death of T'Challa and this sets the tone for the rest of the movie. I personally like the route that they chose to take for this because there's no gimmicks in these scenes. From this point onwards, you'll feel the tension that the death of their king has on everyone. Although their Black Panther has passed, Wakanda lets it be known to the world that they are still a force to be reckoned with. But what's a Black Panther movie without its star, Black Panther? Well, for starters, I just want to say that the entire cast did an excellent job. Everyone stepped up to the plate, but I have to say that Angela Bassett, who plays Queen Ramonda, and Letitia Wright, who plays Sherry, really carried this movie. You can tell by their performances that this wasn't just another movie for them. I was more so surprised about Letitia Wright. She had so much pressure on her for this movie following the sudden passing of Chadwick, Many fans, including myself, wondered if she would be good enough to be a main character now, or if they should just recast this role. And I'm here to say that she absolutely showed that she can hold her own weight as a main character. Everything about her performance and the way that she was written in the movie was excellent. She removes any doubt that I may have had about her being the face of their franchise going forward. And Angela Bassett just brings the glue that keeps everything together. She was amazing in the first Black Panther as Queen Ramonda, and she's even more amazing this time around. The raw emotion felt by her character throughout the movie is immense. Now, having great actors is fine, but the story has to be decent to also. So, was the movie entertaining? Yes, in typical Marvel fashion. The plot is nothing we haven't seen before from Marvel but I appreciate that they focus more on character building throughout the movie to make you care more about the conflicts that occurred. The main villain, Namor, was decently written in the movie, but he could have been utilized better. I won't spoil anything, but I don't consider him to be a real villain, and you'll see why. Also, his reasoning behind certain things in the movie simply makes no sense to me, and there are parts that could have been avoided. However, his performance was a huge standout for me, and hopefully we get to see a lot more from the Atlanteans in the near future. I wasn't too familiar with the comments surrounding him going into this movie, but there's a lot of content that they have to work with. Also, the first time that the Atlanteans made their appearance was very suspenseful and it was executed brilliantly. It's going to have you on the edge of your seat. but. There are a few contradicting points involving the Atlanteans that confused me personally. You'll see those for yourself. On another note, Sherry was put through so much in the movie and it forces her to find out a lot about herself. I won't spoil anything, but there's an interaction between her and another beloved character and this scene does a great job at displaying the different emotions Sherry is forced to endure while also testing her morale you'll see a version of Shuri that will surprise you throughout the movie. Nevertheless, the story was decent. I'm glad they didn't go down the route of Thor Love and Thunder and make it into a parody. The movie had the perfect utilization of comedy when it needed it, but it was never overwhelming or out of place. However, this movie did not need to be 2 hours and 40 minutes at all. I felt like they could have gotten it a bit under the 2 hour mark and it would have been able to have the same effectiveness. As a side note, 
I watched the movie in IMAX and I was really able to see how bad a good amount of the CGI was. It took me out of some of the scenes. However, there are some really good CGI moments where the set pieces were jaw dropping. But that's typical Marvel for you. Overall, I think Black Panther Wakanda Forever did exactly what it set out to accomplish. Although the story wasn't the strongest that we've received from the MCU, the emotions and real life influence behind it definitely makes it one of the most impactful movies we've received from Marvel thus far. Moreover, I believe that the movie served as a great send off to the character T'Challa while serving as a beautiful tribute to the beloved Chadwick Boseman. I left the theater with no doubts that the Black Panther franchise is going to thrive in the future. Therefore, this movie gets my casually recommend rating. But I want to hear from you all. Have you watched it yet or are you planning on watching it? And if you have watched it, what do you think about the future of the franchise? Do you think it served T'Challa and Chadwick well or do you believe they should have recast him? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, let's keep it casual.